Welcome to the 15th video in the series MVMED Unfolded, a complete guide to the MVMED software. In the last video, we explained how to set up and start your simulation. In this video, we will begin to explain our 2D and 3D analysis program, Leonardo. We can access Leonardo via the MVMED headquarter. Once Leonardo opens, we can see a large blue area which will display the data from our simulation. We can also see a variety of settings on the left side of the screen. On the right side, we can see the data navigator, which allows us to load in simulation data and extract it into 2D or 3D maps. In order to do this, we need to click the Select File button to load specific output data from a simulation run. In your output data, you will find different folders that contain all the data that has been calculated for the different elements of the model area. In this example, we will pick the folder Atmosphere and select the specific date and time we want to analyze. Leonardo will now load in the Atmosphere data of the whole time series of our simulation. Once the data is loaded, we can see the time series displayed in the Data Navigator. If we want to change the time we want to analyze, we can simply double click on the desired time. After that, we need to click on Extract Data to Map. In this example, we will analyze potential air temperature, but first we need to select the height of the temperature data that will be displayed. The K value refers to which Z-grid cell plane should be displayed on the data map. We can also see the height displayed to the right for each K value that we enter. For this example, we will analyze the temperature at a pedestrian height of 1.25 meters, which corresponds to a K value of 2. Now we need to click on the Extract 2D button for Leonardo to create a data map from our selected data. Once our data map has loaded, we can see a colorful map visualizing the differences in potential air temperature. We can now change a variety of settings to design our map on the left side of the screen. Make sure that Data Layer Settings, Data Layer Legend and Special Layer Settings are all activated. If they are not, you can toggle the activation of any layer setting with a right click. Under Data Layer Legend, we can customize our legend of the data layer. The floating option, for example, makes our map a bit smoother. We can also change the colors in the legend and choose from a variety of color palettes. The values in the legend are auto-generated. However, we can set the start value in each value step manually by deselecting the auto-fit button. An easy tip for utilizing all colors within our palette and ensuring that all temperatures are accounted for is to round down our lowest temperature and to round up our highest temperature to either a whole or half integer. In this case, we will use 25 degrees as our lowest value and 33 degrees as our highest value. The difference between these numbers is 8 degrees, and since we have a color palette with 10 classes, we divide 8 degrees by 10 to find our step size, which comes out to be 0.8. To apply any setting, we always need to click the Update button here. If the axis increments are unreadable or too close together, we can adjust this by going to the axis settings. Under Special Layer Settings, we can visualize objects like buildings and vegetation. We can also overlay wind vectors to provide a more comprehensive overview of our data. For that, we need to activate the vector settings on the left side of the screen. Under the vector settings, we can adjust a variety of options. For example, we can adjust the length scale of the vectors. We can also turn on random vectors instead of having a single vector for each grid cell and can adjust the total number of displayed vectors. If we want to display only the wind vectors without the air temperature colors in the background, we can simply turn off data layer settings. Additionally, under vector settings, we can turn on use data layer color. This will display the wind vectors with the color scale of the loaded data layer. When we are finished adjusting all of our settings, we can save our analysis as a Leonardo file by clicking the Save Map button. We can also export the analysis as a meta file or bitmap by clicking the Export Map button. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video, where we will explain how to compare simulation results and how to create 3D maps.